Mark, uh, 41 years old, live in Amsterdam, Netherlands, and uh, I'm a work as a freelancer. Um, I will talk about uh, DevOps transitions and how you can do that, how you can do this in uh, big organizations. Well, uh, oh, I said okay. Just waiting uh, one more minute for everyone to come in. So uh, it's quite cool to be in a cinema, and do a presentation over here. So, uh, so how are the chairs? Does it look like a cinema or not? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> How's the noise? I believe. Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> as you saw in the inter introduction movie, um, I will uh, bring you um, uh, some insights in um, yeah, DevOps uh, transitions. Uh, also, uh, want to talk about the misuse of, uh, of of DevOps, of the word of DevOps. Hence my uh, my title. So the topics I like to cover during this presentation. Um, I want to bring you some history of DevOps. I don't know if you all are aware of the history of DevOps. Who knows where DevOps comes from? The word. Raise hands. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So I can teach you something. <laughs> And um, <coughs> also about uh, the commercial uh, exploit, uh, exploitation of it, um, what it means to me, some war stories. Um, I work with, uh, with big enterprises and also some smaller companies. Um, how do they deal with DevOps and, uh, and, what, do and, and what, what we uh, learned from this. And in the end, I want to yeah, give you some takeaways uh, for some DevOps uh, transition pillars. So uh, my name is Mark Heistek, um, as shown in the, in the video. Um, I, I call myself also a DevOps uh, evangelist, not for the word DevOps, but really I really like to get uh, to bring the most value to the customers. I think the keynote was a very really good one. Uh, really talk about customers, how you can cooperate as a team to get better. And uh, I worked several companies, uh, did some um, yeah, consultancy over there. Uh, I will talk elaborate more about uh, the ING Bank. It's a big bank in the Netherlands, who got a huge transformation uh, from a real traditional bank towards a real IT company, and also the Dutch Railways, where I'm uh, working at this moment. And um, I did some, uh, yeah, some gave some advice to Shell and and the, and the Dutch police as well. So a lot of big companies with uh, a lot of legacy also in their organization. But more about that later. So um, <coughs> I want to bring you uh, on, on some, kind, yeah, some, some history of, of DevOps. Because I think it's important that uh, it reminds us, uh, as it's stated here, it's from practitioners by practitioners. Um, it's not a product or, or a job title or whatever. It's an uh, experience-based movement. If you go back in the days and you see what we do with it now or what, what, what kind of uh, meaning we give to it now, it's uh, totally different. Not totally different, but en enriched. And it is, of course, last but not least, uh, decentralized and open to all. So um, <coughs> who knows that one, Pic the guy on the picture? Who knows him? No one? Really? Okay. No, that's no problem. That's why I'm telling something about the history. That guy is the godfather of DevOps. I call him so. His name is uh, Patrick de Bois. He's from Belgium. And in 2008, he went to a conference. And at that conference, there were uh, so-called open spaces. And an open space means that uh, when you're in the audience and you're part of the audience, you can raise a topic and then you go uh, with several people, you go to talk about that topic. And you just share knowledge, uh, uh, talk about problems, ideas, suggestions, etc. So at this conference, they organized also open spaces. And there was one topic, and a sticky note on the whiteboard, and it said Agile infrastructure. So Patrick thought, oh, that's nice. Let's go there. So he showed up at that open space, and he was the only one. 
there was no one there. <laughs> so, uh, so he hunted down this guy uh, who put on the sticky note. And they started talking about this agile infrastructure. So um, in the end, uh, he was thinking, why is there not an, uh, an conference for developers and operations? Why is not that? Eh? It's not there. So he, he lives in Belgium. Yeah, I made it a bit blue, so the Belgium flag is not like this. Okay, it's in Belgium, and uh, so he thought, okay, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make a conference. It's about development and about operations. So it's about Dev, it's about Ops, and it's two days, DevOps days, and there it is. So uh, he started tweeting about it, make some noise. So he used the hashtag DevOps days, and uh, other people picked it up. And I said, hey, that's cool, that's a nice movement, let's talk about it. But hashtag DevOps days was a bit too long. So they skipped the days, and then it's hashtag DevOps. And this is, the <laughs> this is where the word DevOps comes from, from its origin. So it uh, yeah, emerged via, via Twitter. And after that, um, so he made this conference, DevOps days, in, in Belgium, in Ghent, in 2009. And um, it was yeah by a community, uh, two days, and I believe now nowadays there were held more than a hundred or two hundred uh, DevOps days all around the world, uh, having that same concept, and with one core community organizing this with and together with local people. So, <coughs> but the most important thing what happened about DevOps is that Gartner. Uh, one of the, the leading uh, uh, IT visioners picked this up and uh, it was in 2011 and they picked it up and they made some noise about it. So then the whole world uh, it got exposed by uh, the word, uh, word DevOps. So you can see how it goes from a just a little sticky note on a whiteboard to what we hear at now in a big room talking about DevOps, sharing knowledge, and uh, have some fun. So more people picked it up. So uh, there's also called the so-called De DevOps Cafe. Uh, who is familiar with two, these two guys? Okay, <laughs> no one. Well, Google them. They got a lot of. Uh, you can sh sh see a lot of videos about DevOps and uh, etc. Et and um, well, uh, what I really like about DevOps is there is no manifesto, eh? no rules to live by. And, uh, but these guys, John Willis and, uh, and Damon Edwards, that's Damon Edwards, by the way, and that's John Willis, not like this. And uh, they said, okay, we need to have something to hold on. So what's DevOps about? Eh? It's about yeah, culture. Yeah, okay, it's culture, it's a culture movement, but it's also automation, eh, to automate your work, make it easier for yourself. It's about metrics, because if you do not measure anything, well, what do you do it for? So you need to get better in that. And it's about sharing. Share everything you did, uh, your successes, but even more important, share your failures. So they came up with the acronym CAMS. And um, who's familiar with this one, CAMS? Did you hear about that? One. Yeah, two. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now everybody does. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, and and sometimes they put an L in the middle, like for lean to lean uh, to lean your processes. Um, why I'm telling this this history is uh, because of the next topic. Uh, I I, th I really find this important uh, because it's it's by uh, by uh, yeah it's, it's for practitioner particular practitioners by practitioners. So what you see nowadays is uh, a lot of uh, co yeah, commercial stuff going on around DevOps, the word DevOps. So you've got a lot of certifications. So we got the DevOps Agile Skills Association. So you pay a couple of thousand euros and you end up with a paper here, yeah, I'm DevOps certified. Uh, there is uh, what Certi Prof and uh, you can go as uh, the DevOps Essential Professional Certificate. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, DevOps, there's even a DevOps certification board. Uh, there is the DevOps Institute. Uh, here is the DevOps Foundation certification course. That's how it looks like. And um, oh yeah, and you can even have a complete academy towards to grow towards DevOps. 
So, uh, okay, <laughs> they earn a lot of money with it, but that, what does it mean? The best certificate I found on the internet was this one. And that's what, it's, that's what the value for a certification means to me. It's nothing. Um, I will come back on this later. And, okay. and then we talk about tools. We've got a lot of DevOps tools. You see it all around. Huh? Uh, DevOps tools, this is the DevOps tool, blah, blah, blah. And it's fine. Huh? Uh, but they all fulfill some kind of part in the automation or to make your work some, something better. But they just put the word DevOps in front of it or something with DevOps, and they sell it. This is the DevOps tools for your organization. Just take it. And a, couple, a lot of consultants coming in, implement it for you, and in the end, it does not work. Okay. So there are a lot of DevOps tools. Um, so yeah, well, there are a lot of open source tools here as well, so uh, th those are great. But I really uh, yeah, don't like the big companies selling DevOps tools. And of course, we've got the full stack DevOps engineer. Who is a full stack DevOps engineer? Yeah, you lie. <laughs> oh, you, you come close. <laughs> full stack. What does it mean to you? Huh? Doing, everything. Doing everything. Okay. Okay. That's what I think it means. But uh, but yeah, that's that's quite a broad uh, uh, yeah broad definition. So if you really look at uh, what they do, then then probably you'll be in uh, some kind of uh, yeah you will be an operator or a specific uh, developer. But uh, yeah, nowadays if you just Google or go on LinkedIn and you search for DevOps engineer, you've got even senior DevOps engineers and uh, DevOps system engineer. Everything the word DevOps is used or misused ev uh, every everywhere. So you can uh, the full stack developer, no other developers required. And you see, we were hiring, even Amazon is doing that. So you can, uh, the DevOps engineer, professional, get certified for that. And um, yeah, for me, it's a big, big, big holistic thing going on. I understand why companies do this, because I don't blame them because they need to uh, earn some money with it. But if, if I want to hire something, and I, uh, I probably need to put also DevOps in it. Otherwise, they won't see it and it won't be interesting enough. And this one I like is that you could even got skills there. So someone uh, made, yeah, what knowledge and skills are required for DevOps? You have to have 42% uh, of what? Business processes knowledge. And then all kinds of states and, and the top three DevOps skills. And it's all, there's all some kind of truth in this. But some people take this as, that, okay, this is how it works. So I'm going to educate myself on people skills for 30%. The other 70% is... Mm. So, um, okay, so far the bashing on the, <laughs> on the word DevOps or the abusement of word DevOps. And what does it mean to me? It's, um, I really like DevOps because it's, um, it, it, it existed from a specific need. Uh, we want to make... Uh, we want to get better in getting better every day. We want to close the feedback loop with the customers because we want to deliver them the best product there is. And that means collaboration within your company. And hence it understood, so okay, we got this wall of confusion bef between development and operations. We need to break that down, but it's more than this. It's also that you uh, have to involve all the, the whole company in this, your marketing and even your customers into this whole movement, into this delivering the best product uh, for them. And Martin also uh, referred to that in his keynote. That's what you want like to do. High quality and on time. So um, I have been working in, uh, with an ING bank and I got in touch with the word DevOps in 2011, 2012. So uh, I really got excited about it because I was some kind of change manager. I had a whole list. And I was walking in the projects, hey, did you this, this, this? And I was checking everything. And in the end, and I said, okay, all right, do this, this. And I didn't understand what they were building, but I just had this list. So, I, and there was a big, and uh, a lot of people in between in the process. So, uh, so when, when I heard this, and I said, yeah, finally, now we can hey, move some on and, 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 and uh, creating great products. 
And if we look at, uh, so I will compare the Dutch railways together with ING Bank and the difference in it, because um, if we look at ING Bank, there, there was this CIO, uh, it's called Peter Jacobs, and he was really, he was, he's a programmer, a really smart guy, young guy, and he said, I want to do the DevOps. So DevOps is the way we organize and continuous, is continuous delivery is the way we work. Okay, but at least he gave a definition to it. And they started implementing or implementing, using it, and creating 160 teams of eight people and uh, growing towards this mindset of DevOps. And normally you say, okay, you can go bottom up, huh? but I think the top down from management perspective is even more important because if they don't uh, support it, that means that it will die in the end. The movement will die. So they need to keep on pushing uh, to facilitate, not to say you have to do this, but to f keep on facilitating. And uh, what I saw at, uh, at ING was that um, uh, we did this, so that m brought a huge cultural change because they were traditional banking people. People were just doing things day in, day out, and they need to change their work. So they gave the opportunity to them for, uh, to grow towards engineering in two years. So complete training budget, etc. And in the end of the two years, if you do not, did not succeed in that, then you probably, it's, it's not for you. Then, then you need to leave. So that was a big change. And they started also implementing with the whole CAMS idea. So changing the culture, do a lot of automation, and they made a lot of failures. But they accepted it, the failures. And the failures they make nowadays are really small. So they can, uh, they can, uh, they can, uh, they can fix it really quick. And it was different in, in big blocks of, uh, of projects. And if you, s if you look at the Dutch railways, that's a total different uh, thing. Um, that's um, more like uh, management is saying, we need to do this, but they don't have real vision. And they say, okay, we, we need to do this, but <laughs> yeah, but operations is operations and don't touch it. So, and that's development. So there's, those are different, but we do DevOps. How do we do DevOps? Yeah, well, talk to each other or whatever. There's no real vision, eh? so I'm, I'm, I'm blowing it up a bit. Uh, but you see, on the on the on the teams itself, they really want to work to the to this, but they they lack, uh, yeah, uh, the facilitation facilitation of the management, and that that both that needs to be very important in this. So and also with this, they don't start small; they they start big. They want to change the whole air organization at once. ING did the same. But it worked because they were all together in this. But this one is too big. Huh? People fall back. So if you say, uh, if, you, if you look, who knows this circle? The golden circle of Simon Sinek. Uh, that's a lot of teeth here. Okay. That's, uh, Simon Sinek says, okay, the why is the purpose of your existence, the purpose of your existence of your company. And the how is how you deliver your services. And the what is what you deliver. Sounds quite easy, but it's quite difficult. Because the purpose is not about money. It's about what you want to do, what you want to achieve, what you stand for, what your values are as a company. And the how are more the processes or the, uh, the way of working, how you produce your services or your products. And the what is what you, uh, what you uh, deliver. And most companies are in for adopting DevOps or some other kind of cool buzzword are in the what. Eh? Say, hey, they do DevOps, so let's do DevOps too. So that means, yeah, how does it work? I don't know, it's DevOps that probably has to do something with development and operations. So you go sit together and the magic will happen. So they don't think about the why, they start, co uh, they copycat. And that's what I see within uh, the Dutch railways going on now. And I think it's very important that they need to experience all this because they need to, they need to, to learn to fail. Eh? And uh, this is what I see a lot. So if you, uh, what's the consequence? If you start, uh, start copycat, in the end, it will cost you more money, you will deliver less. And if you be yourself and you try to change it the way you want to do it, then you will get uh, the benefits of it. So uh, I, st I stole these pictures from, uh, from Damon Edwards. You see on the left side, you see, okay, the, uh, the goal, uh, the, the Big Bang transformation dream, he calls that. So you've got a start and a goal. But how does it really work? Is you start and then you, yeah, 
and you go down things don't don't work out and then when you uh, come here it it's aboard and then it's the change is gone uh, they sometimes say uh, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast okay it applies a bit over here uh, so and then the change is gone and then you're back in the old in the old way of working so small changes do the same but over and over and over again so if I want to give you one advice is if you uh, work in a big organization and you want to change, start with a small team who are capable of doing this kind of stuff, who are of the correct mindset and then, and then facilitate them. And in the end, they will, they will create momentum for the rest of the organization. That means that uh, other, peop other teams will look at it and say, hey, that's cool, we're quite jealous, we want to do that as well. And then you start spreading the word and then you change as an organization. If you start from inside out, there are always people who say, no, that doesn't work, and then you're done. So small changes, that's, that's the real, uh, the key thing here. And if you um, uh, want, to, uh, want to change, you go to visit conferences like this, or maybe you want to visit other companies. And if you go to another company and to see how they implement uh, continuous delivery or Agile, Scrum, DevOps, give it a name, as long as you know what you're going to do, then uh, look, yeah, you, you make it some kind of safari. You come to uh, different companies, you pick out the big five, what made them successful. And then uh, you bring them back home, you start thinking about it, and okay, how can we do it? And then use it your own way. Don't start copying it, yeah. use it, uh, change it, and then, um, and, then and then implement it your own way. And this one has already uh, was in the keynote as well. Uh, what I meant with unicorns here are the unicorns companies like Spotify, Netflix, Google, Facebook. They, they all kinds of nice stories. But if you want to make a transition, you have to look at the horses. Go to uh, visit your competitors, well, if they allow to, uh, and, and see how, how they do it. Uh, go to companies who are in this journey for one year or two years. Um, if you want to change from a real legacy company towards the new way of working, so to say, Go visit those kind of companies. It's good to be inspired by uh, those unicorns, but they, it's not feasible to, to be like them in a short time. And I was quite rushing because of the time. I don't know. Uh, now I've got plenty of time probably. Yeah. <laughs> so um <coughs> having said all this, um, if you want to change towards uh, DevOps, or something else you want to getting you want to get better then um, yeah to in my experience I, I made up five pillars maybe I can add or remove some it's just some takeaways that you uh, maybe you can use uh, let's let's start at the left side how does your company organization looks like is it really cost driven profit driven uh, uh, it should be more like the purpose uh, what what why do we exist as a company so they uh, they know what they're doing. How does how is your work methodology? Is it really waterfall project management, uh, delivering big chunks of uh, functionality every six seven months, and then uh, when you deliver it, uh, sixty percent is not needed anymore? Or are you going to work more in the way of working for Scrum eh, in agile way? And you're not there yet. If you say okay, we do Scrum, we are agile, just like Martin said, you're not there yet. There's more. That is just a way of working. So you need to, to look at your implementation. How do we deliver? Is it completely manual or do we need to automate everything? Do we go towards continuous delivery? Also good. And I also uh, saw this. They say, yeah, we're going to do continuous delivery, automate the delivery pipeline. But meanwhile, the uh, whole uh, application was one big monolith. One small change and it fall down. I said, yeah, maybe we deliver every two weeks and every two weeks we got uh, multiple bugs. Maybe you have to break down your uh, uh, application, but simplify your landscape in this, make it more independent from each other, so you can easily change, uh, change it. And the last but not least is the environment where you're working in. Do you have still this manager coming to you? Yeah, I need to. You want? You need to do this, or do you give them complete freedom and you trust them? And you say, okay, this is what I like. Do whatever you want, because you hire smart people not to tell them what to do. They need to tell you what to do and how to do it. That's why you hire smart people. 
so um, don't be a DevOps wannabe. That's the thing I want to give to you. If you want to change, look at, a, uh, at other companies, pick up ideas, uh, see how, can how you can implement it yourself. And uh, don't try to copy to be the superhero, become your own uh, superhero. Thank you. <laughs> Probably some time for questions. A couple of minutes. Sorry? 15 minutes. 15? Yeah. Oh, you had 10 minutes. Uh. So it's out of time. Oh. Yeah, so we now have Sorry. time for answers and questions, and I will try to help to moderate it. So please raise your hand if you have any of these. Can we scale it? <laughs> Does it scale? No. <laughs> uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, question is, you, you were proposing that when you want to introduce DevOps, when you want to transition into something like DevOps within companies, um, it can, the change can be driven either from the bottom, right, so from the workers, or from the upper layers, so from management, so from the from the top down. In my personal experience, this is a great scenario. The best scenario is what you were saying when both uh, sides are together, like ING, everybody was on board, so it was uh, it was beautiful. But sometimes when it comes just from management, the people that are below management, they feel like they're that management management is trying yet again to shove some shit down their throats. And then there is a lot of resistance. How do you? What is the best approach to tackle this problem? Um, yeah, the, the the main challenge in this is within the management itself. They need to. Uh, how do you call it in English? They need to facilitate the people and not tell them what to do. So they inspire for like, hey, we want to go this this movement. This is why we want it, and we think this is will work. What do you think? How can we facilitate you? Can we provide you training? Uh, please make failures. Eh? Learn. And uh, that's the most important thing. Because if there's still a blame culture, then it won't work. You say, okay, you do DevOps and you can start learning and you make a mistake and then, yeah, okay, you, uh, you don't get your bonus. You, you failed. I think you should get a bonus because you failed. <laughs> that's a totally different approach. <laughs> Not on purpose, but if you fail, then probably there's you found something that wasn't uh, wasn't known yet. Yeah, Thanks. so that's the that's the biggest uh, thing. Thanks. Other questions? Well, at least there were some. There's some new stuff. Oh yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Kaleem. Um, this looks really, really good to transform from uh, development only and operations only to merge it so it's DevOps. But what about uh, you cannot do anything without money? So how about the budgets? Um, how did uh, the companies calculate with the operations budget and uh, development budget? Because then it will be maybe merged and. Uh, Normally what we see is the operations budget escalate. So everyone, uh, as soon as they've uh, implemented something that goes wrong, they say, oh, now it's operations. Yeah. So what is your experience on that? It's a good question, thank you. It's, um, um, what you normally see, you, you get this uh, project budgets, and then you, uh, when you and when they run out of money, they deliver less quality, and they give it to the operations uh, uh, department. They have uh, a specific uh, budget uh, as well. Um, what they did is they, um, uh, in, in the end, we, for one application or one product, uh, let's, let's, let's make it small. You say, okay, I need eight people to develop and maintain this. That means you need a budget for eight people for a whole year. And you create uh, a backlog of, uh, of, of, of changes yeah, or, or, or uh, user stories to uh yeah for the team and uh, that can change every two weeks three weeks whatever how, how long a sprint takes and he said okay the budget is eight people for developing and maintaining the application so that's how we solved it so no no real change budget no operations budget you're a team you build it you run it you fix it you break it you fix it that's uh 
That's how we solved it. But it's quite a quite a hard journey because uh, everything is budget driven, cost driven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, what, that's the greater goal I'm telling. That's the greater goal you need to go to. Yeah. Sir, I just want to add to that that you, you should start small. That, that's, that's the most effective way. If you try to drive the change in, within the whole company, it's going to be way slower. It's going to be way much more expensive. You start with a small team, uh, elite team that can drive like a really small project as an experiment and embrace failure, as Mark was suggesting. And then the, the, you, in the beginning, you will fail more, but as, as the team gets more mature and more experienced, they will, they will build that, uh, that maturity and they will fail less and they will show the company that it can be done with hiccups in the beginning, but it can be done. And then you can convince the upper level, levels of management to, to move ahead with more teams and more teams and more teams until it takes over the whole company. Yeah. Over there. It's coming up. I'm getting close. Meet in the middle. <laughs> Thank you. I want to ask, um, you say we have five pillows and small, can we, can we show them? <laughs> yeah. small team to start. Yeah. But from what we need to start, just from everything, and this will be the failure or not? <laughs> Uh, you, what you mean to start from everything or uh, to do everything? Yes, you have team? five pillows yeah. or, or six or... Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, you, okay, when you start, you need to do er everything. Everything it's or not. No, no. It's, <laughs> it's from just to start. It's just that you take in the other ones into account. Mm. So if you say we're going to start with, uh, with Scrum as a way of working, that's fine. But if you you need to take the other ones into account. They say, okay, we need to do, to do something with that as well. So you can't start everything at once. So first, maybe you need to say, okay, we, ma we will be masters in Scrum and in the whole process. Or uh, yeah, are we going to, uh, to have a small, small application? We do continuous delivery on it. And then we can see how we can break down the big monolith to, to get it more done. So also in this, Starts, it's just like you go to a gym, eh? you, you just work out very hard and you, s and, and you skip your leg days. <laughs> and that's what happens here. So, so you got these tiny legs and you... <laughs> so that's, that's what happens, is you sub-optimize. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. I have a question in regards to the big organizations and uh, not the top layer of the of the team itself, the management of the team, but the management of the organization. Meaning that if we have a big organization, for example, a bank, yeah. as you as you've showed us, um, I'm sure that there are many teams that are working on different products and projects, and some of those teams may be more advanced, others not. Some of them are doing DevOps, others not. But there's a top layer of management, for example, operations that are responsible for the whole bank. So how do you convince them that this team is mature enough to behave like that? Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Uh, this is typically how, it's how it works within the big organization that holds back the whole change. Because that management says, OK, no, it, I, I don't trust it. And uh, also with this, uh, try to uh, make applications independent so they can run their own application. So if one falls down, not the whole operations goes down. And then, and then make these small changes. There's not, and, and the only thing is to uh, give transparency of everything you do, talk to each other, and, uh, and the manager needs to have to show some courage in this and he really needs to believe in this. And nowadays, there are a lot of showcases in bigger companies that show that it can work, but you need to accept you can make failures. And I, th I think that's a very good remark you made uh, about, uh, yeah, it's uh, the whole, the management of, of the whole operations. It hold that, that holds back the change always. Yeah. So that's all the only thing. Start small and create momentum. Then in one, okay, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. I trust it. Yeah. Thanks. Was there one more question uh, here? Yeah. Oh, the mic's coming. Okay, we have uh, less than 10 minutes for discussion. 
So we will wait for more questions. I'm on my way. Where, 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 where? where? Okay. Uh, first of all, thanks for your presentation. And my question is more, I guess, for uh, for me as a single unit. Uh, I guess you don't like term DevOps engineer, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but let's say if you want to go that way more, uh, what is a more important experience or mindset? Uh, mindset. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's a tricky one because uh, it, it, it was an easy question. You say uh, education or mindset, then definitely is mindset. <laughs> I think uh, uh, both, but the mindset should be there. Yeah, it's, okay. uh, I, I think mindset is more important. Okay, thank you. Yeah. One here in the front row. Uh, let's say you kind of introduce DevOps and you're d delivering features with it. And how, well, does it change the uh, way you understand the feature? Because at first you build it, so there's a cost for building, then you maintain it, so cost for maintenance, then you run it on your servers, so cost for servers. Then you look at the results and say, this feature does not uh, provide us enough value because we spent money for it. So does it kind of deliver that mentality that we track the features and their actual value that we get and then we kind of dismiss the features which don't uh, bring enough value compared to their maintenance cost so does devops kind of is the way to that or is that kind of different thing devops is not the way to that it's it's the way how you act as a team and you can call it devops if you would like to uh, because I say DevOps is getting better and getting better every day, you w because you want to to shorten the feedback loop. That means you get feedback from the application, and if it does not work right, you must uh, yeah, throw it away or change it. And you can call it DevOps, but I think the the whole DevOps movement and the mindset in in DevOps that that will clear the path to that. And then yeah, you have to uh, because if you can deliver fast, you also can see what is used. You have to measure it, eh? have the right metrics. So uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good start. And then you have to getting better. I believe it, it's Google or Spotify that don't, don't call it DevOps or whatever. So it's just bringing the best value continuously. Yeah. Any last questions? One last question, maybe? Two last questions. Maybe three? No? Okay. Okay. Well, thank then. you very much. Enjoy your day. <laughs>